for these and other messages and books by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email office at powercityinternational.org. Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. First Peter chapter 1 verse 6 Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. You rejoice even though for a season you are in heaviness through manifold temptations coming from all angles. And you know that when you are tempted is because of faith. Every time you get tempted, the target is your faith. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials, and thirst, knowing these that the triune of your faith. The triune of your faith. Every time you are tried, your faith is the target. Trials come to put faith under pressure to see if it will quit. Manifold temptations. Seven. That the trial of your faith. See that? The temptations we are targeting your faith. The trial of your faith. The aim is for the devil to put you under pressure to see if you will quit. Yeah. To see if you will quit because if he can get your faith away, he's fine. If he can get you to give up on the faith, it's a holding faith, holding, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith, made shipwreck. If he can get you to the point where the pressure gets you to quit, he knows you will wreck. Manifold temptations. And the target of these temptations is that the trial of your faith. Because the temptations are there to try your faith. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise. That no matter the trial, it will never get you out of praise. The trial never gets you out of your environment of praise. But that the trial, when it comes, you and your faith might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trial never succeeds in getting you out of your, your environment, your winning environment. For this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's your winning environment. You stay in the faith. Uh, that when the devil come you resist steadfast in the faith you stay in the faith and resist you don't get out of faith and resist you stay in faith because that's your winning environment you don't fight for victory you fight from victory you live in victory you're not fighting for it you have it already so you fight from that is the fight where the winner is decided before the fight started and you are the winner so you stay in your environment of victory and fight. That may, you may be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Put up the next verse for me, verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing. And because you believe, you rejoice. What is the corresponding action that goes with belief? You rejoice. You rejoice. You don't believe and you are depressed. No. When you believe, you rejoice. In spite of and irrespective of, you believe. So, you rejoice. Why do you rejoice? Knowing this. 
You rejoice knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. You know that. And let patience, let it have a perfect work that you may be entire wanting nothing. You're coming to that place where everything redemption has provided will have taken physical effect in the physical. It will manifest it. You rejoice. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You rejoice. Amen. Amen. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yet believing, you rejoice with joy that cannot be spoken. Joy that cannot be explained. Nothing is working yet in the physical, but you are rejoicing. <laughs> That's, that's faith. That's faith now. Nothing is showing in the physical, but you rejoice like one that has, that has it. Because you have it. Because you, you have it. Now, just the devil knowing that, he quits. The, just the devil knowing that you are rejoicing already, celebrating the manifestation, that even though you have not seen, you believe. You rejoice. This is your rejoicing year. Because this is the year of the goodness of God. And when you arrive at the place of goodness, what do you do? You rejoice. We rejoice. Somebody shout, I rejoice. Now, you don't rejoice with bitterly face. Somebody say, I rejoice. Yeah, you rejoice. Amen. You rejoice. Glory to God. Hey, my God. You rejoice with smiley face. Somebody say, I rejoice. Amen. There are many of you, I'm looking at you here now, you're already there. Yes, you rejoice. You rejoice with what kind of joy? Joy unspeakable and full. Not some glory, full of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's somewhere I'm going to. Put it back for me. Oh, Malaboshka, verse 9 receiving when you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory this is where you arrive at you arrive at receiving the end of your faith what is the end of your faith manifestation when the manifestation comes you don't need faith anymore the faith is important until manifestation the arrival of the physical manifestation of the matter is the termination of that faith you receive the end, the end, the end of your faith, which is actually the salvation of your souls. The salvation of your souls. Where your soul is saved, saved from worry. Your soul is saved, saved from concern. Your soul is saved, saved from the pressure that was coming from these needs and from this situation. Now that the end has arrived, your soul is saved from this manifold temptations count it all joy when you fall into these trials and some of you are going through trials right now and some of you may go through trials in the course of the year and some of you may go you every one of us will go through trials from one time to the other and that is why you've got to rejoice no matter the temptation somebody shout i hear you you've got to rejoice now what is that that makes you rejoice in spite of the temptations, the trials, and the tests. What is that which makes you rejoice in spite of what you're going through? Because sometimes it's difficult to rejoice when you're going through. But Peter tells us that's the only attitude that reflects faith, that we rejoice. Even though we're going through manifold temptations. We rejoice. He didn't say be happy. Because there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness comes from physical things. Joy comes from the word of God. These words have I spoken to you that you may have joy and that your joy may be full. These words, these words, these words. Because joy is a spiritual force. It comes out of the word of God. How forcible are right words. Joy is a force of the spirit. So when we say you rejoice, we're talking about read the joy. Read. 
Read the joy. The joy was growing, so you re you capture the joy back. Something came to steal it. You 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 rewind it back. You rewind, rejoice, rewind, bring back joy. That means things will come that will try to take the joy. You rejoice. You rejoice. Paul said, rejoice. Read the joy again. I say, read the joy. That may not sound English correct, but it sounds spiritually correct. You rejoice. Come on, tell somebody, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. Joy coming out of your spirit, man, because of what you know. We are always confident knowing. We rejoice knowing. We know what others don't know. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. We rejoice. We rejoice through what we're going through. And when we rejoice like that, then the joy becomes unspeakable. Then the glory flows into it and you receive the end of your faith. In rejoicing, you receive the end of your faith. If you don't rejoice, you can't receive the end of your faith. And you know, sometimes it's very difficult to rejoice when you're going through some things. But when you know what the word of God says, you rejoice. It, your, mind may not, your mind may not fathom why you are rejoicing, but your spirit will bypass your mind and produce joy. Your mind is busy wondering what is there to rejoice for. But your spirit is bubbling. It's bubbling. That's why it's joy unspeakable. It's joy that cannot be spoken. It's joy that does not have English expression. But you know it is there. Joy unspeakable. And that joy brings the fullness of glory. And the moment you get to that point, you receive the end of your faith. Teaching good? You receive the end of your faith. Which is the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. You win all the time. Amen. Somebody say, I win all the time. Somebody say, I rejoice all the time. Amen. You rejoice. Oh, glory to God. We rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Now, we established yesterday that faith cannot produce outside of the environment of grace. Faith only takes delivery of what grace has provided. So faith is not a future tense. Faith draws from the past to the present. The job of faith is to travel back to the finished work of Christ and bring the reality and the tangibility of what Jesus did into the present reality. Because faith is now. Faith goes back to what Jesus finished and brings it to present reality. It's not a future tense and it's not a past tense. It's always bringing things to the present. Now faith is. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now. Not later. Now. So faith goes back to bring what Jesus has finished. God is not going to move. You don't move God by your faith. He moved 2,000 years ago. You don't fast to move God. God moved before you knew fasting. You don't even pray to move God. Prayer is not trying to get God to do something. If you are praying to get God to do something, that's why you're where you are. Your prayer can't get God to do anything. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. He's not doing anything anymore. What your prayer does is to cash on what he has already done. Your prayer goes in to bring a delivery of the finished work of Christ. Somebody shout, Jesus finished it. I didn't say somebody said, I said somebody shout, Jesus finished it. Yeah, he finished it. He finished it concerning your prosperity. He finished it concerning your health. He finished it concerning your sin. He was the lamb of God that took it away. The sins of the world. He took your sins away. He took it away. You don't have it. He took it. And the moment you get born again, he removes that thing in you that manufactures sin. And when the manufacturing industry is gone, the only thing that may remain may be a few of the products that were hanging around. Which eventually, they will be exhausted because there's no more manufacturing plant to manufacture the product called sin. He took it away. He took that plant out.
out of you. And that's why he boldly said, sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? You are not under the law. You are under the grace of God. Why grace? The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Grace brought salvation. Salvation gave you advantage over Satan, sin, and everything that the devil did in Adam. Now we reign because we received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. We reign. We reign. We reign and we rejoice. We reign. He finished it. Somebody shout, he finished it. He finished sin. He finished Satan. He finished sickness. He finished poverty. He finished principalities and powers. He sorted them all out. And he sat down at the right hand of the Father, waiting until you make his enemies his footstool. He's not going to come down. Say not in your heart. Who shall bring him down? Because he's not coming down. To bring Christ down means he didn't finish. The only day he will come is to take you home. It's called the second coming. The first coming finished it. The second coming is to take this man that has manifested the glory of Christ back so that his home can be renovated. Amen. God wants to renovate your house. It's called the earth. Because Satan has been running the system. And God is going to change Satan. Put him in the bottomless pit. And renovate your house. And bring you back. You'll just be ruling and enjoying Jesus. Amen. We rejoice. Yes, we rejoice. Praise God. Faith takes a delivery of what grace has provided. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, you are saved by grace through faith. Saved by grace through faith. Faith takes a delivery of what grace has supplied. Grace supplied salvation and when faith comes alive from your inside, it engages the work of grace and the outcome of grace and faith is salvation. That's the outcome of it. And this salvation includes healing, health, Success, prosperity, it includes money. Oh yes, your money. It includes your money. And many of you are going to see money like you've never seen since you were born. This particular year. Oh, this particular year, that money is coming. That money, that money, money, money is coming to your house. Because somebody shout, I receive it. I was talking about how do you know when you believe. And I said, number one, when you believe, you, you, you know it from the way you speak. We believe, therefore we speak. Number two, we said, how do you know you believe? When you believe, you are not moved or you do not consider what you see. While we look not at the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal or changeable. Um, but we look at the things that are not seen because they are eternal. Number three, we say, when you, when you believe, you believe with your heart, not your senses, your heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mad confession is made unto salvation. And then number four, we said, when you believe, you are not afraid to give. You are not afraid to give. One of the greatest things that hinders the church from giving is fear. Fear not. You say, bring. You say, oh, I have bills to pay. He says, no, fear not. Give it to me. Make for me first. Make for me first. Thereafter, go make for yourself. She made for him and she, he, he blessed her. And she lived on the rest of what was left the remaining days of her life. They ministered to Jesus of their substance. Because out of them, Jesus cast out unclean spirits. He impacted them with his ministry and it was natural for them to give to him of their substance. Let him that is taught communicate with his teacher in all good things. Let him communicate. When we stop communicating, we are not saying you should tell us, good afternoon pastor. That's not communication. Communication in Bible terms is giving and receiving. It's not communication of... Pastor, I they greet. Hello, Pastor. I'm communicating. No, that, 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 that's not communication. That's greeting. It's not phone call. Hello. 
Papa, are you okay? I'm, what else? I'm okay. You should know I will always be okay. So we say communicate. We are saying bring out of your substance. Paul said no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but ye only. Communication in the kingdom is giving and receiving. When you don't give to me, we are not in communication. Even if we greet all the time, we are not communicating. We only start communicating when you start giving to me. Yes. You are receiving from me every day. So it is just natural for me to receive from you every day. I give to you every day. You give to me every day. We are communicating. When I give and you don't give me, it's a monologue. It's not a dialogue. And after a while, when there is a monologue relationship, the man that is giving will run away. He said, there is no benefit in this. I'm the only one. Ta, 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 ta. It's one-way traffic. It's supposed to be a flow to and fro. Giving and receiving. No church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving. They say you have to increase your offerings. Oh, sure, you have to increase your offerings. Don't go through this year giving what you were giving last year. You've got to make up your mind. I'm going to change my offering. I'm going to change my giving. I'm going to give to God better than I gave last year because God is going to manifest better things in my life. It is that expectation, that anticipation that provokes you to unleash corresponding action that brings in the greater supply. No church, but you only. And those churches where Paul did not take money from them, at a point Paul came back and said to them, forgive me this wrong. I have wronged you. Forgive me. Because, be, because I didn't receive from you, I made you inferior to other churches. I made you inferior because I didn't take your offerings. I classified you among the inferior churches. And he said, please, for this wrong, forgive me. Because from now, I will collect from you. So that I do not make you inferior. Amen. Are we talking here now? I need your attention because this is very key. They say you have to prosper. Listen, you have to prosper by force by fire. So there is no accommodation. Not one. No space for poverty. I declare total war on poverty. accommodation for it. No, no accommodation for it. Somebody said, but I'm just new. I came poor. Don't worry. Before this service is over. Before, not tomorrow, today on. For sitting here for one hour under this expensive talk, you too are infected. Yeah, you have been infected because there is an infection in this house. It is called prosperity infection. Sitting in the atmosphere, you get it is more contagious than Ebola. Ebola is very slow. The one in this church is instant. Pa! <laughs> Once you just enter, pa! You are affected. You don't even have to wait for sweat that you entered. That's all you need. Amen. And it's incurable. There is no cure for it. No cure at all. When it catches you, you are caught forever. Even if you are just watching by TV, you are infected. Listening by radio, infected. On the internet, this prosperity has infected you. And you cannot apologize. Once it infects you, it's incurable. Amen. See, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. And he said, because of that, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches where in glory so even when there is famine you shall laugh even when things are rough you shall laugh because your source of income is not natural is glory christ in you so the source of your prosperity is inside if they can't remove christ they can't remove your prosperity because your prosperity is as authentic as christ christ in you the hope of glory you are in christ christ is in you and my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches where well, in glory and the glory is in christ and christ is in you you're condemned to prosper irreversible condemnation to prosperity. Say, I hear you. I'm not here to say, I hear you. 
That's what grace makes available. That's what grace makes available. God is able to make how many grace? How many grace? How many grace? Let your all scare every wizard. God is able to make all grace abound towards who? That you always. How many times? Having how many? Always having all sufficiency in all things. I abound unto every good work. This will be the year of rejoicing in your families. Somebody shout, I rejoice. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. It's abounding. It's abounding. It's abounding. It's abounding. Amen. And I always have sufficiency in all things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. By faith, Abraham. And if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Heirs of Abraham, seed of Abraham, heirs of Christ. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, the trying of your faith, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He offered him up. God who spared not his son but gave him up for us. How shall he not with him freely give us all? He offered his only begotten son. Verse 18. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, we are talking about rejoicing. We are talking about receiving the end of your faith. We are talking about manifestation. This man was tried. And we know the story. Before I read the next verse. We know the story. That on their way to Mount Moriah, Isaac asked the father, Father, I see the wood, I see the fire. Where is the lamb? The lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. Where is the lamb? The Lord shall provide for himself. So, even though he was carrying Isaac, he rejoiced. He was rejoicing. Abraham was not crying and Abraham was not depressed. He rejoiced. He rejoiced. There was no sign of crying. Because even from the way he answered Isaac. I see the wood. I see the fire. Where is the lamb? A man that didn't know any. Will have started crying. A man that didn't know better. Will have been lamenting. Or he will have kept quiet and said nothing. And be sorrowing inside his heart. But the father must have turned and smiled and said. The Lord shall provide for himself. The Lord shall provide. He rejoiced. He rejoiced. The Lord shall provide. And they gone to Mount Moriah. Abraham took Isaac by himself. He didn't even take anybody to assist him. He took the boy by himself, put him on the altar. Brought out the knife to kill him. And the angel of the Lord said, don't touch that boy. I've provided a ram. Get him out. Why did that happen? Look at it. Next verse. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. God was able. Abraham had already accounted. He had calculated and concluded that even if I have to kill Isaac, I know the person I'm dealing with, he will raise him up. Because he had already told me that in this Isaac shall the families of the earth be blessed. There's no way this boy will be dead. I'm going to raise. This guy knew something. He knew something. Accounted that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. Abraham already had an imagination of the resurrection of Isaac. And it was so real in his imaginative mind. He, he saw Isaac raised from the dead. So that even when he was about to kill Isaac, it was not an issue. The killing was no more an issue. 
the only thing that reigned in the mind of Abraham was the image of resurrection. So no matter what he went through, he rejoiced. You can't rejoice until you have the inner image of the covenant. You can't. You can't. This rejoicing is not just rejoice. No. There is something you must carry on your inside that gives you a reason to rejoice. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah, there's something you must carry on your inside. He received him in a figure. He had the, a figure, an image of resurrection. I don't know what image you have on your inside because that image is very important. That image is what will carry you through. That image is what will hold you on. That image is what will keep you rejoicing. That image is what will keep your head tall and high. That image is what will keep you going through the year. And if that image is faulty, your year will be faulty. You've got to have the right image. You've got to have a perfect image of the covenant. You must have that image. Because Abraham, your father in the faith, it was that image that kept him on on that journey to Mount Moriah. If you have the image of poverty, there's nothing we can do to help you to prosper. Because until that image is corrected, we cannot... Don't you know that Emosha to Balanaga, the, the warfare of the believer is a warfare against imaginations? The battle, the only battle that the believer is called to fight is a battle against the wrong image. The weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Casting down Iba. The Gable Shatter. The, the greatest realm of the believer's warfare is a realm on image. Add value to your life. Download ADMI app free on your mobile devices and have church on the go. Watch our live services, view the testimony center, sow your seeds and offerings, announcement, and send in your prayer request. No amount is too much to invest in data to listen to the word of God. Image is everything. For God created man in his image is everything. The image you have is everything. If you have the image of failure, my friend, even if they put you in success, you will fail because you cannot live better than the image that you possess. As far as your eyes can see, I've given to you. Ask your neighbor, what's your image? Because that's very important. When you lose sight of your image, you become depressed. When your image becomes blurred, you become worried. When your image is no more clear before your eyes, you become anxious. When you lose the blueprint, the image of where you're going, you become angry. You are filled with fear because the picture is no more clear. But when the picture is very clear, no war should rise. No demon should break loose. No all hell should fight. You know that after all the noise, the image will abide. You know that nothing will take that image from me. Am I talking to somebody? Ask your neighbor, what's your image? What's your image? What's your image? What's your image? You've got to have the image of the covenant. Teaching good tonight. The image, the image, the inner image of the covenant. Very important. Some of us were afraid because we don't have any image. So whatever the devil tells us becomes our image. You don't have an image of the covenant. So if the devil tells you you will die, when he said die, the picture plasters in, you see the coffin. Because words create images. When I say dog, you don't see D-O-G, you see an animal. When I say cow, you don't see C-O-W, you see an animal. When I say car, you don't see C-A-R, you see a car. Words paint images. And that's why God gave us his word. So we can use his word to paint images. That's why God speaks. He speaks to create images. Because your image is your victory. And your image is your failure. The image. Casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself. There are images that are high. And they make themselves look more powerful than the word of God. Those images are called traditions. Traditional images. Images that you collected from your fathers. 
Where are those images tell you? Can't you remember great grandpa, grandpa, pa? All of them died with bicycle. Can't you see? You can't even afford. You can't even afford house rent. You are also trading in their path. That image is trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. What does the knowledge of God say? We know the grace of our Lord Jesus. How that he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. That you through his poverty may be rich. You are rich. You are rich. You are rich. But there is an image that is conflicting the knowledge of Christ. And you've got to look at that image and bring it down under subjection and make it obey Christ. When the image of the scripture becomes more real than the words, Satan and your situation, than the words, your circumstances are painting. When the image of the covenant is more real than what the devil is telling you, then what the devil is telling you becomes nothing in the face of your image. That's where the battle is in the image realm. Imaginations. High things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of Christ. I'm bringing into subjection every thought, every thought, every thought. That's where the battle is. That's where you win. That's where you lose. In the thoughts. In the thoughts. Hey! You win, you lose. In the thoughts. You can't see yourself dead. And we pray for you to live and you leave. There's no man that can pray for you to live. When you have seen yourself dead, the prayer will help you die fast. Because we can do nothing outside of what you see. As far as your eyes can see, Jehovah gives it to you, the image. Genesis 11 verse 3. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower. They were painting pictures with words. Let us build us a city. Bam. The picture of a city. And a tower. Bam. The picture of a tower. In their minds. They, they gave the description of what they were building so that they can carve out an image in the mind. An image that nothing can stop. Some of you go with people who paint image of fortified poverty in your minds. And then, you are not taking extra time to pull it down. You are not taking extra time to cast it down. And you expect just 45 minutes of my preaching every Sunday to help you permanently cast it down. When you are spending 4 or 5 hours feeding that image. Feeding it fat. When you are supposed to starve the useless image of hell and feed the image of faith. Huh. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower. Look at the description to, to make the image clear. A tower whose top may reach unto heaven. They were specific. So that you won't think it's one of those Dubai towers because none of them reach heaven. They took their team out of the box. They gave them images that were not normal. Because they wanted to move into the realm of the impossible. You can't enter the impossible. It takes impossible thinking to do impossible things. If you can't think impossible, you can't do impossible. You have to think in that dimension. You have to think at that realm. I'm talking here. The devil is a liar. That devil that has been messing up people in your family ends his business around your life this night. That amen is not a good one. If that amen slaps the devil, I command him to pay you back. Who stopped me reach the heavens? And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Their vision was clear. Their vision was very specific and clear. They were not in, they knew exactly what they wanted. They knew what it would look like and they knew the height. They want to break the record. They want to be exceptional. They want to be outstanding. They don't want to be in the mediocrity group. They want to be known, a force to reckon with. And that's where heaven is taking you to. Somebody lift your hand and shout, I will be a force to reckon with by the end of this year. I didn't hear your amen. Say it one more time. I must be a force. I have the image in my mind. I am a force that must be reckoned with. 
in 2015. You didn't shout amen to them. Look at the next thing that happened in verse 5. And the Lord came down to see. That means the image was so vivid. The image was so clear that even God in heaven saw the picture. God saw it. Not just the picture. God saw the reality. Because once you are an image carrier, to you is an image, to God is a finished product. With God, it is not finished until the image is specified. Once the image is specified with God, it's finished. It's model, like model, architectural model. Once the architect gives you the design and the modeler builds the model and they keep the model on ground, that building is finished. As far as I'm concerned, once I can see the model or the architectural design of a, of, of a building, that's all I need to build a house. That's, once I see the picture, believe me, nothing on earth will stop me from building it except the image is not attractive. It doesn't matter how much the cost of the building is. I start, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. I start that building. Some of you know image. That's why year in year out you're at one spot. No image. Some of you, the only image you have is of eating through the year. I will not lack food this year. I will not lack food this year. That's why when the year is finished, nothing has been done in your life other than your stomach looks complete. The image is called stomach infrastructure. The structure that provides for stomach. The building of stomach. That you are not the masses. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are called out of darkness into his marvelous light to show. Somebody say I will show. The praises of God this year. You didn't shout a powerful amen. The Lord came down. Tell somebody the Lord came down. I prophesy all over this church. The Lord will come down because of you. He will come down to see. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. With the children of men. Build dead. Build dead. It was a completed edifice. Where God was concerned. Because once you can have the image with God. It is done. Once you specify the image and God can see it. Nothing can stop it. Because why things don't happen is because you yourself, you are confused. You don't know what you are looking for. No image. It's time to build images. Build images. Pull it out of scripture. And create the year in your mind. Create it. And let God come down and say, done. Somebody say, I hear you. Receive grace to build that image. Can I hear that amen like thunder? Can I hear that amen like thunder? Lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. This is a year. The image is clear. The devil is a liar. It shall become a reality. You didn't shout amen to that. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Which the children of men built it. It was built as far as God was concerned. Once the image is clear, that's why the warfare is in the image. Because once you have the image of eating in the dream, no matter the deliverance they pray for you, you will keep eating in the dream. It's an image problem. It's not a demon problem. It's an image problem. Once you have the image of failure, no matter who was there to help you succeed, even if they give you exam expo, and you have the question paper to answer at home, and come and supply the answer sheet, you will get zero inside. It's not about the exam expo. It's about the image. And when you have an image, even if you are seeing something, it is what you have that you reproduce. You won't reproduce what is not in you, such as I have. You can't give what you don't have. It's the image inside you that creates your world. The image inside you does what? Creates your world. It's called the inner image of the covenant. Abraham received the resurrection of Isaac in a figure. Hey, he settled the matter. And because he could see the picture, he was not flabbergasted. The Lord shall provide. It was clear in his mind. You rejoice when you see the image. Glory to God. I'll put up the next verse. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one and have all one language. And this they begin to do. See? They were, they were just beginning. 
But God came down because he saw it finished. He saw it finished. Because once his image is there with God, it is finished. But now was when they were about to begin. But what brought God down was the finished work. God in heaven saw it finished. When he came down, it was just about to begin. The image was so clear that even God saw what they saw. God saw. When you give God images, he gives you supply. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask. Image. Thinking. Because as a man think it. Uh -huh. The Lord came down to see. Already in my spirit, I'm seeing buildings this year. I'm seeing it. I'm not saying we will. I'm, I'm seeing buildings finished. I'm coming to dedicate your own. And those of you that refuse to take your own because you can't build the image, people in outside here, our branches, they will take this thing. I'm telling you, those on the internet and Kingdom Life Network, it will reach them wherever they are, and they will build and I will dedicate it for them. What are you talking about? The world shall not come back void. If you don't take it, somebody's waiting for it. Oh, I'm serious. The world shall it will not come back void. It must accomplish. If I say you will build, you must build. If you don't build, your neighbor will take it. Open your hands and say, I will lay the foundation. I will finish it in the name of Jesus. Shout it again. These hands shall lay the foundation. These hands shall finish it. You didn't shout an amen like thunder. Ah, with me, I'm finishing houses. I'm not seeing one. I'm not seeing two. I'm not seeing five. I'm not seeing ten. I'm seeing houses. Estates, cities, towers, duplex. I'm seeing them all over the place. I'm seeing all of you in your properties. I'm speaking to people inside their houses. As I'm preaching now, you are hearing me inside your house. I'm seeing some of you inside towers. I'm seeing some of you inside duplex. Some of you in bungalows. I'm seeing you in your house. Can you see what I see? Now we agree and nothing shall be impossible. Ah, shout that amen like thunder. Sit down, let's talk. Sit down. And the Lord said, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Once you have the imagination, nothing can stop you. God himself concord that he did not even Satan. Not even witches, not even God Himself, not even God could stop their imagination. He said, Nothing can stop these people. So God now had to look for a way to stop them because the image was painted. Nothing could stop the image. God couldn't say, Well, I cast down the image, it's not the one that constructed the image, you can't cast it down. So the only way God could interfere with them was to come down and make them not understand themselves. So that when they can't understand, it's called gorilla warfare. Yeah, that's what it's called. Now, God came down, made sure they could not hear each other. So that when you say, bring block for the building, he will bring water. You say, idiot. Idiot. I say, block, you brought water. Bah! This one will say, why did you slap my brother? Bah! That one will say, ah, you slap my uncle? Bah! Confucian has entered the camp. He said, okay, bring cement. He goes and bring mortar. See, I say cement, you bring sand. Bah! Commotion in the whole camp. So when God interfered with their communication system, the image was told. Otherwise, if God, there was no other way to go about their image because it has been formed. He saw it. He came down to confirm it. So now the only thing is to make them not be able to communicate so that they cannot build. Otherwise, that image is as good as done. What image do you have? You can't see yourself on a bicycle and be shouting amen for Mercedes. No. You can't see yourself on Kekena Pep and be shouting amen for Jeep. You can't be seeing yourself single through the year and I say you will marry you shouting amen. Your amen doesn't change the image. Once the image is changed, whether you say amen or not, that's what you need. 
Amen. First Chronicles 28 verse 9. And thou Solomon my son, no doubt the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts the imaginations that come from thoughts. That's what God searched. God searched the heart to find out or to understand the imagination created by thoughts. That's God's concern. He searched all hearts and understanded all the imaginations of the thoughts. Look at the progression. Imaginations that come from thoughts. That's why think on these things. Think on these things. What things soever are pure, just, lovely, honest, of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. If it is not one of these, don't think. Don't think of dying before October. Don't think of being bedridden. That image of wheelchair in your head. If you don't pull it down, you will end there. Don't see yourself buried. Because if you entertain that image, you will, you will get there. Stop seeing yourself not able to graduate. Because once that image stays there, you won't graduate. So when those images are floating all over your head, you cast them down. You know, that cannot happen. No. I have the mind of Christ and let this mind be in you which was in Christ. Question. Can Jesus imagine himself in coffee? Never. So where did you get that from? Cast it down. You ask yourself. When those images are coming, ask yourself, can Christ think like this? Get down. Amen. Don't imagine yourself borrowing through the year because you've been borrowing every year. Don't borrow this year distribute pay off everybody you owe and start something without borrowing see I hear you am I teaching if you're hearing say I hear you say imaginations from thoughts very important and if you don't want to be disturbed by thoughts don't watch any movie that does not represent what Christ will think and if you don't want to be disturbed by thoughts because when the thoughts are too much if you cannot overcome the thoughts they will establish themselves. A stronghold is a house constructed with thoughts. That's a stronghold. A house that you use thoughts to construct with pillars and foundation. That's a stronghold. Thoughts in a particular area flooding your soul to a point where they construct a standing house. That you can see clearly. It becomes a stronghold. Yeah, a fortress. You cast it down. The moment it comes, cast it down. They are called fiery darts. Of the wicked. You cast them down. See, I hear you. First Chronicles 29, 18. Oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers... Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people. Keep this forever. In the imagination of the thoughts of the heart. Image, thought, heart. Imaginations that come from the thoughts of the heart. Imaginations constructed by thoughts. That originate from the heart. That's why I say, say not in your heart. Say not. Say not. Say not. Don't say it. Don't say it in your heart. Because you will do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Or think. Or think. Or think. Or think. Think on these things. We rejoice. Amen. <laughs> In the imagination of the thoughts of the heart. I prophesy to a thousand of you whose amen will slap the devil tonight. You are entering into the manifestation of your image. 
you are entering into the manifestation of your image oh everything you can imagine this year god will beat your record uh, god will go beyond your imagination and give you expectation if you stand up and shout that amen you will see the manifestation of your image lift your right hand and shout i receive the manifestation of the inner image of the word of god now say i cast down every contrary imagination right now right now i cast down i didn't hear your amen i prophesy over everyone here every image that has been in your mind for years that has denied you access to your promised land tonight we pull it down we pull it down we pull it down we pull it down and in the mighty name of jesus i decree in this building the image of the covenant that guarantees your glorious future that guarantees your glorious adventure receive manifestation take one minute open your mouth like a madman and pray in the holy ghost hey! if you open your mouth wide god will feel it if you open your mouth loud and wide god will feel it pray in the holy ghost and rejoice as you pray the image of your future the image of greatness the image of your destiny see that image as you pray in the holy ghost Pray in the Holy Ghost and see that image. Build up your most holy faith. Rise up higher and higher like an edifice. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Be enlightened. Be strengthened with might in the inner man. Be strengthened with might in the inner man. As far as you can see, heaven will bring it to pass. As far as you can see. Mando go bo jitele ne monte ege borosa kele ne monta ke borodonge je je jubre de ke borokoto se pere de behada rivers of living water flowing out of your belly rivers rivers of heaven's image rivers of heaven's image may reinforce that image pray in the holy ghost rise up like an edifice higher and higher hey thank you lord thank you lord jesus praise you my father Lift your hands and begin to praise him for that image. Begin to praise him for the image of the covenant that heaven is about to establish for you this year. Just rejoice as you praise him. We rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice. Thank you, my father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I decree that every covenant image that is in this house manifest. 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 I prophesy wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive the end of your faith. Receive the end of your faith. 
receive the end of your faith in the mighty name of Jesus it is done it is done For these and other messages and books by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email office at powercityinternational.org.